In this quick video, we're gonna talk about how we can better handle makes webhook response so we don't get that annoying accepted message on that black screen. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from automationhelpers.com and we're a no-code implementation partner. We're not gonna do anything fancy in our make scenario. We're just going to use a webhook because a webhook can be used to trigger many other systems and it really doesn't matter which system it is that we're using. It's just important that we're kicking this off. And then likewise, I'm gonna kick this off from Airtable, but you can do this on any no-code platform of your choice. So inside of Airtable, I'm on an interface here and I just made a button to indicate that we're triggering this make webhook. Obviously, we'd give it a better call to action of what we're actually doing. And I'm just doing an external URL and I'm putting in the webhook URL here to open up in a new tab. But notice that there's different ways that we can actually trigger these webhooks. This is more of an Airtable thing. So you could potentially use an Airtable automation to be able to have a script and within that script be able to trigger that webhook. And we do that a lot as well. The downside here is that you're also consuming Airtable automations, which counts against the number of automations that you have depending on your plan. So that works for some things, but you don't necessarily want to do that as your default. The advantage is that you don't get that black screen that pops up that says accept it. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, let's just go ahead and toggle this on. And if I click this button, this is what you see. This is kind of the default make experience. So it says accepted, which is nice to know that, hey, something has occurred. We know that it's proceeding, but it's a little bit annoying. And then we have this window opened up and we probably have to manually close that. So it becomes annoying. How do we handle that? Well, inside of Make, we've got something called a webhook response. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on the same module here and you can add a webhook response. We'll just drag this up and connect it to our webhook. Now I do wanna say for our clients, what we actually do most of the time is that we use a webhook response to redirect the user into something that would be meaningful depending on the automation. So for example, when we have people who want to initiate an invoice process or initiate DocuSign, what happens is they click, they trigger that webhook, but then we redirect them to the document after the fact. So webhook responses can actually be used for way more meaningful automations. But in this case, we're just saying we don't really have a good use case. We just want to be able to close that window so that nothing happens. So we'll say if this is a status of 200, it's okay, it's accepted, this goes through. Now in the body, we're just gonna say, basically trigger JavaScript and say window.close, which is going to close our window for us. So like I mentioned, there's way more creative things that we can do here with JavaScript, but that works for our purposes. Let's make sure that we save that. And then if we head back and we trigger this, now that's gonna open and close that window so we don't have that extra action of making the user click that button to close it. If you have any questions about Make or Airtable and how to get up and running, feel free to reach out to us at automationhelpers.com. We're offering free 30-minute consultations.